Welcome to the first podcast of Medicinal Chemistry. My name is Bob Gottwals, and this is the NCSSM online program. By way of quick introduction, what we want to talk about here is why are we teaching this course? Why is the NCSSM online and the NCSSM residential programs offering a course in medicinal chemistry? The primary reason is there is a tremendous need for a new generation of scientists who really understand drug chemistry. The development of new medications, new drugs for therapeutic value is going to be criti critically important over the next 50 years, uh, just as it has been important over the past 50 years. And we're anxious to make sure that there are uh, students out there who hopefully will become future scientists that really understand a little bit about drug chemistry and how drugs are, are created, how they're tested, and, how, and what kind of effect they have for curing disease in human beings. This is particularly relevant right now if you've been paying attention to the health reform debates going on in our, in our country. You understand that uh, we really need to be able to reduce health costs and one of the ways we'll do that is by helping the drug, by if the drug companies can come up with more effective, more cost effective ways of developing new medications. And this course will help those of you who are interested in pharmacology or pharmaceutical sciences, or even those of you who are just interested in the health field in general, medical school, nursing school, uh, whatever the case may be, really learn to understand what drugs are, how they're made, how we develop new drugs, and how they hopefully will result in a therapeutic uh, result for patients with illnesses. We also want to teach and or reinforce fundamental concepts in chemistry, biology, mathematics, computing, and medicine. This course is called Medicinal Chemistry, so most of you will be thinking that this is primarily a chemistry course, which in many ways it is, but you'll be, there will be times during this course where you'll be thinking that it's a biology course. There will be times during the class where you think you're sitting in a mathematics class. There will be times in this course where you're, you'll think you're in a computer science class. And certainly there will be times where you'll think you're in medical school because of the topics that we're being taught. Medicinal chemistry is a tremendous topic to teach because students really do need to learn a little bit of chemistry, a little bit of biology, a little bit of math, a little bit of computing, and a little bit of medicine in order to be successful. And the real trick here is to uh, learn something about each of these four or five different areas and then to be able to apply them to some interesting problems. So in some cases your chemistry may be a little bit rusty and hopefully we'll get to review some chemistry that you've already seen. In some cases there'll be uh, some chemistry that you haven't seen before and you'll get your first introduction to uh, that particular concept in chemistry. Same with biology, mathematics, computing, and medicine. There may be things that you have seen before here or there may be things that are new to you. Uh, the trick will be to ask lots of questions, to let me know when you're having trouble, and if you're having trouble it's likely somebody else is as well, and we can top, stop for a second and make sure the concepts are clear. Obviously, we want to provide uh, an exceptional opportunity to highly motivated, highly academically gifted students. You're in this program because you have demonstrated some above average abilities in academics, particularly in science and mathematics, and you have expressed some interest in, in uh, high-end uh, coursework, particularly in science and mathematics. So hopefully, uh, we're providing you with a very exceptional opportunity uh, and the key word there is that we hope that you are motivated and we're going to find out whether or not that is true or not. And obviously we want to help you start making career choices. Most of you are juniors and are starting to think about what career choices you might be interested in. You're starting to think about what am I going to major in at the university. Uh, many of you expressed an interest in going to medical school or in uh, going into one of the health sciences fields and certainly this course will help you decide uh, if that's something you are truly interested in. You may decide I'm more interested in than I ever was or you may decide well I may be a little less interested than I, I thought I was. Okay so that's the why we're the four reasons why we're teaching this course and I'm sure you'll discover others as we go along. The general structure of the course is the course typically starts on a Wednesday night and we do about a topic a week and uh, 
we will have mandatory video conferences on Thursday night. These are from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. and it's going to be critically important that you come to these video conferences. This is, will be time where we talk about uh, what's happening in the labs. Uh, we'll be talking about things that aren't easy to talk about through a podcast or through a, a reading activity. So I appreciate that many of you have extracurricular activities and other things that you do. Uh, but keep in mind that the Thursday night video conferences are your class. I mean, that is when your class is held. So you can't think about the Thursday night video conference as some activity that you can make a decision about whether you're going to come to it or not come to it. That is class, and it's a full hour, and it's a really important hour, so we're going to ask that you really uh, think about your priorities and make it a point to show up to the Thursday night uh, video conference. There will be office hours uh, three days a week, uh, Sunday, Mondays, and Tuesdays. This is an optional attendance, and these are they'll be run through Illuminate. I'm also going to have one at 8.30 a.m. on Sunday morning for those of you who are early risers. And this is where you show up if you're having problems with the lab, if you have questions about a homework. Uh, this is how I provide you with help if you need extra help. Uh, so that's, you should start thinking about making a habit of trying to sign into the video conference during these office hour times. Uh, there will be weekly readings. There's a textbook that you'll get during, uh, at some time in the near future. I am also developing a new textbook in medicinal chemistry specifically for you. Uh, there will be readings from these various textbooks, and you're expected to do them. And to encourage you to do these weekly readings, there will be questions related to the readings on, on WebAssign. Uh, occasionally we'll uh, have you read uh, uh, primary literature, we'll have you read professional literature from things like the Journal of Medicinal Chemistry and other professional journals. There'll be an evaluation form to, uh, to help you evaluate the what you're reading and for me to make sure that you understand what you're reading. There will be uh, usually two weekly labs. They'll be submitted either via WebAssign or via BrainHoney. Typically, there's a small, pretty structured lab that's going to be due Sunday night, sometimes Monday night, depending on the lab. And it is almost always the case that there will be a more complicated, more advanced, more rigorous, uh, more complete lab that's going to be due on Tuesday night. It'll be critically important that you don't procrastinate and that you don't wait until late Monday night or even Tuesday to start working on this lab. Uh, keep in mind, if you look at when the office hours are, uh, the, it's going to be very hard on Tuesday night at 8.30 to give you much help on a lab that's due at 11 o'clock that night. So make it a practice to get an early start and go from there. Uh, the goal, uh, the, what we want you to do is prepare you to do medicinal chemistry. This is not a course where we're going to give you lots of quizzes and tests and you memorize a bunch of stuff and regurgitate it back in a multiple uh, choice kind of fashion. We want you to be able to do medicinal chemistry. And there'll be plenty of opportunities for you to demonstrate your ability to do medicinal chemistry throughout the course. And the big thing is at the end of the course there's a large case study where you're going to work in a team of three students to prepare a 25 to 30 page technical report on some drug of some, ch some choice. And this is going to be a group project, again, resulting in a very large technical report. And the, what we're looking to test there is, are you able to apply what you've learned to an interesting chemical problem, medicinal chemistry problem, just like you would do if you were working in the outside world. And here's a quick snapshot of the case study for 2007, a couple years old now. And you notice there, you can sort of read along there, that I will give you a scenario that you work for some fictitious company, and we'll talk, tell you a little bit about what your company does, and we'll tell you who's on your team, and we'll tell you what it is the technical report is supposed to uh, cover, and then it'll be your job as a team to figure out who's best at doing what, and how are you going to divide up the, the labor, and how is it all going to get put together at the very end so that it is a uh, well-written, well-thought-out report. And it's always a matter of speculation. There's always a guessing game going on as to what drug or what molecule I'm going to pick in any given year. The drug changes every year, and you'll have a good time trying to figure out uh, ahead of time what drug I might choose for the case study. Okay, here's a uh, definition of medicinal chemistry. I think I took this directly from Wikipedia. Yes, I did. 
and edit it down a little bit. And what you should notice there is the words chemistry and pharmacy are popping up. You'll see some things about statistics in there. Uh, notice there at the very bottom there where it says this is a highly interdisciplinary science combining organic chemistry and biochemistry and computational chemistry and pharmacology and molecular biology and statistics and physical chemistry. These are all things that you're going to learn in this course, uh, very few of which, if any, you've done before. Uh, about half of the students may have taken computational chemistry, so you'll have a little leg up. But for the rest of you, it'll be, there'll be lots and lots to learn here and it will require your best effort and lots of, uh, of concentration and, and work on your part. Okay, some of the guiding principles for the course. Uh, the thing that you're going to hear probably the most often throughout the entire 18 weeks is this idea of SPA. And what that stands for is structure, property, and activities. Structure really talks about what do we know about the structure of the drug. And there are things like in organic chemistry, you're going to have to be able to quickly and easily recognize things like functional groups, alcohols, uh, esters, ethers, aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids are all examples of functional groups. Okay. You're going to have to be able to look at a molecule and say, are there hydrogen donors and hydrogen acceptors on that particular molecule? Because those are important uh, characteristics of how of the structure of a drug that influences how it behaves. You're going to have to be able to look at a drug and tell me something about steric factors. Steric is another word for size. So molecules or drugs have different sizes, and you're going to need to be able to look at a drug and say, uh, because of the steric factors in this drug or because of the size of this drug, this is how we think this is going to behave in a, in a, when we give this drug to a patient. You're going to have to learn a little bit about things called electron withdrawing and electron donating groups and how they affect the behavior of a molecule that we're trying to make into a drug. Uh, in terms of properties, you're going to want to know what do we know about the specific characteristics of a drug. For example, some of the quantum properties, and this is be done through computational chemistry. So there's no wet lab in this course. You won't be measuring characteristics in a traditional chemistry lab with test tubes and beakers. We're going to use quantum chemistry on and computational chemistry to help us uh, determine some quantum properties. Things like total polar surface area will be uh, properties that you will learn how to determine and, and figure out and understand why it's important in drug chemistry. This is sometimes called, by the way, topological polar surface areas or TPSAs. So these are some of the properties you have to learn. You'll have to learn about things like hydrophobicity and lipophilicity. Again, these are characteristics of drug molecules that influence how it will behave uh, when we take that chemical and try to make it into a drug. And in activities, we would th say things like, what do we know about how a drug reacts with other molecules or endogenous substances in the body? That should say in the body, not in the property. My apologies. And endogenous means natural substances already in your body. You have a lot of endogenous substances like proteins in your body. And we we're going to want to try to figure out how drugs interact with those endogenous molecules in your body. And again, most of these are going to be proteins. Uh, here's a sort of a, uh, a graphic of uh, we'll get to the graphic in a minute, I'm sorry. In terms of structure, uh, you're going to need a solid understanding of organic chemistry, which is the study of carbon-containing compounds and all, as I've already alluded to. You're going to have to really understand functional groups. We'll spend the first two weeks looking at uh, organic chemical functional groups. In terms of properties, you're going to determine most of the properties through computational chemistry, things like energies, dipole moments, electrostatic potentials, homo lumo orbitals and are all examples of things that you'll learn how to calculate and understand why they're important in terms of medicinal chemistry. Okay? In terms of activities, uh, you're going to have to understand receptor ligand or protein ligand uh, interactions. Receptors are typically endogenous compounds, as I've already mentioned, like proteins. Okay. And ligands are small molecules like drugs. So the, you'll have to understand how proteins and drugs that we introduce into the body interact with each other to hopefully produce a therapeutic response and not have too many side effects. And we'll spend a lot of time talking about uh, ADMET, which is absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, and toxicity. So lots to learn here. Now is the graphic. Here's a, what I'm trying to do is help give you a visual way to understand SPA. If I were a psychologist or a sociologist or a social scientist, um, that what I would be interested in, of course, would be social science, which is primarily the study of people. 
and people exhibit specific characteristics such as stru structure properties and activities. Over on the left side where you see structures, this talks about what the person looks like and things like height. Uh, they could be tall, they can be short, things like body type, heavy, medium, uh, thin, uh, hair color, brown or gray. Uh, another characteristic is properties, describes the basic characteristic of a person. They're lazy, they're intelligent, they're disciplined, they're organized, they're messy, they're an early riser. And over on the right hand side under activity describes how people interact with other people. And this could be things like humorous, shy, witty, and generous. Okay, so if you were a social scientist, this kind of a roadmap would help you sort of really give a good description of, of a person. So you, if you can say something about the structure, the properties, and the activity of a given person, you can probably say that you know that person pretty well. Okay? This should be a very familiar looking chart, having just looked at the one for people, except we're not interested in social sciences. We're interested in chemistry, which is the study of molecules. Molecules exhibit specific characteristics like structure, properties, and activity. And over on the left again, under structure, this is what the molecule looks like. What we care about are things like uh, what kind of atoms does a molecule have, what number, uh, what kind of atoms are in there. We are interested in the bonds, the bond lengths, the bond angles, something called bond dihedrals. We're interested in the symmetry, whether it's planar or bent. Under properties, we're looking at the basic characteristics of a molecule, things like total energy, vibrational frequencies, enthalpy, vapor pressure, phase change properties, van der Waals forces, some of these you may have encountered uh, already, some of these may be new to you. Over an activity, most of these are quantum properties, things like electrostatic potentials, electron affinity, ionization potentials, and nucleophilicity. So these are all uh, descriptors that talk about how a particular molecule will interact with, the, with other molecules in the body or, or elsewhere. So learning how to understand um, if you can think about molecules with this chart in mind, that all molecules have structures, they have properties, they have activities, and for you to be able to say, I really know this molecule well, that means you can tell me something about its structure, you can tell me something about its properties, and you can tell me something about its activities. And that's it for this podcast. We'll see you online and hope you have a good day. Thanks very much.